Welcome back Edge Tears. As you can see the components for my upgrade to my Ryzen AMD system have come. So currently I'm on a Ryzen 2700X processor with 32 gigabytes of 3200 MHz RAM. And I wanted to let you know after we did that BIOS upgrade, and if you haven't seen that check out my previous video, the RAM is now running at 3200 MHz just fine. I did quite a bit of research to find out which memory works best. Um, with the motherboard and the processor that I have and Corsair was one of them that is supposed to work without any problems. So we got the Corsair RAM and I purchased 64 gigabytes so that should be sufficient. It'll take me up to 96 gigabytes of memory and I decided to buy some Arctic MX4. I had an, another tube. I don't know what kind it was. Um, I haven't bought one probably in 10 years, so I figured I might as well play it safe and just buy a new one just in case. And here we have the Ryzen 9 processor. This is the 3950X. And really was thinking, might as well get the best that I can if I'm going to go ahead and buy a new processor. Uh, if you're interested, I'll be selling the 2700X. So let me know if you'd like to purchase it if you're interested. And here on the top, let's see, hold on. Should be able to see it. I'm going to zoom in as much as I can. There we go. Ryzen 9 3950X. So I've done a... a number of benchmarks with the system as it is now the 2700x so i'm really curious to see how things go we'll redo those benchmarks once we get the 3950 put in and the memory put in All right, well here's the inside of the computer after i opened it up and i've laid it flat so i've unplugged all the cabling that i have and I really hate doing that because it's honestly so much work to get the cabling plugged back into the right place. I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, most of them USB. And um, there was a method to my madness. Some of them were USB 3, some were USB 2. So you can't just plug them into USB ports. Uh, it's very important to get it correct. Anyway, so. We've got the processor, we have the memory. I'm gonna try to do this one-handed, but I may end up just giving up and getting it done. So over here, I don't know if you can see, I've got this lever. This is a um, Wraith cooler, so it's the standard cooler, and apparently the 3950X will also work with the Wraith. And I know what you, you're thinking about that. The Wraith cooler, is he crazy? Um, but apparently the Wraith cooler will generate less heat, uh, excuse me, the, the processor 3950 is supposed to generate about equivalent or less heat than the 2700X based on my research. If you have some stats that are different, go ahead and correct me because um, I can't guarantee that. Alright, let's see if we can get this off. The quick and easy way highly unlikely what do you think oh, surprisingly it did come off pretty easy all right I'm kind of hung up right there so this may take a second I might need two hands for this hold on Got it a little bit tricky um, because of the cabling you know cable management the new thing that I ran back here behind my case and then I've got another one running down here from the power supply so processor access is gonna be somewhat difficult not very difficult and then of course I'll have to flip over uh, and clean off the uh, cooler and make sure that there's no additional old MX grease on there <clears throat> for the processor I have the original case it came in and I've got the original box so 
what I'll do is go ahead and bring that out, put it in the plastic case so I don't damage any pins, and then clean off the top. As a matter of fact, before I even take it out, I think I'm going to go ahead and clean off the top. Be right back. Apparently, <laughs> I didn't actually record that entire procedure, but I have the processor in the safety case that came with the 2700X originally and here is the box for it so what I'm going to do is clean this up a little bit better uh, I like it in the protected case because I don't want to bend a pin or anything like that so I'll probably use a toothpick and just clean off that edging there where there's still a little bit of uh, Arctic MX4 hiding funny enough my wife found my old thermal compound and it is an Arctic MX4 and I honestly don't think there's any problem with it I'm pretty sure but it is close to being empty so I got the new one we'll use that all right there's the processor back in its little home and we'll go ahead and slide it into the box Ryzen 2700X really has worked well for me. All right, back to business. Um, I've got to get the other processor out of the box. So that might take a minute. Um, there is a seal on the back, by the way. If you ever buy one of these processors, make sure that the seal is still intact. Also, I wanted to point out, you do not want to leave your processor slot um, socket open like that very long because of dust and these pins are so tiny even the smallest bit of dust can cause a problem all right well I've taken the fan the Wraith cooler let's see if I can flip it over so you can see it and I've cleaned off it's kind of hard to see but I've cleaned off the fan and the heat sink so now what I'm ready to do is put a little bit of gel back on the CPU now based on the previous CPU I used too much and I honestly don't remember what I did with the 2700x but let's see what we can do I usually do at least a little bit in the center and then maybe just a tiny bit okay it doesn't look like a tiny bit but it actually is looks like a huge amount but it's not so what I'm gonna do next is put the heatsink back on you may be asking um, will you be able to get the memory in I tested putting the memory in uh, previously I took one of the memory sticks and moved it over when I had the computer open before so there should be no problem getting that memory in all right note to the wise do you see the metal bracket going straight down and then being hooked by that cheap crap plastic clip and I'm, I'm specifically angry with AMD and the way that they mount these processors that right there is the mount for the fan and the plastic becomes brittle and it will break so you should have your temperature warning turned on on your motherboard I know a lot of people don't like to do it but you should because there's a good chance almost a hundred percent that at some point that brittle clip will simply break and your cooler fan will be hanging off not touching the CPU and if you don't have the uh, temperature warning set up uh, basically you could damage your CPU when I install these new processors I usually get a new plastic clip that goes around uh, the mount for the fan and they're only like five bucks so my recommendation is to go ahead and buy a couple of those at the time when you buy your processor upgrade all right the processor is in and it was kind of a pain in the butt I gotta admit but here we have one open slot and a second open slot I couldn't get white again I actually didn't want white initially when I bought my 32 gigabytes of memory but I was able to get black so I'll have kind of a black and white motif going let's get those in 
All right, there it is. DDR4 Vengeance LPX going in. All right, there we go. Got the black and white motif going. I am surprised at how close these um, dims are to each other, but they do have heat spreaders on them, so that's one of the reasons they're so close. And the other is, of course, the design of the motherboard. All right, so got the processor in, got the memory in. I'm going to put the case together at least preliminary I'll do power and video see if we can get it to boot up if we can get it to boot up I'll probably put together the rest of the cables get my keyboard going and things like that this is a part where I'm most nervous will it post power on self test all right well I knew I wasn't recording when the camera shut itself down but anyway you can see that it's running. If there was an emergency, I was gonna yank the power cord out of the back. Um, the fan initially was white and then it turned red and lo and behold, it booted. And it did let me know I had a 3950X processor and that uh, this was the first time booting up. So it wanted me to go into setup. And right now, I'm not interested in doing any overclocking but I did want to make sure if I can find it. This is a updated BIOS, so they've changed everything, which drives me crazy. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that there. Just wanted to make sure that my memory was still using 3200 megahertz. Um, one thing I don't like about this updated BIOS is it really doesn't show you what processor's in here. It's kind of strange. I'm sure if I went through all the settings, it would show me it, but you would think it'd be right here in system status. All right, well, I went through all the BIOS settings to find the CPU and it wasn't in there. The only time I saw the CPU is when I booted up the first time, which I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. And it let me know that the, the processor had changed. It was 3950X and also that I had added memory. And it wanted me to do, I want to say F1 to set up or F2 to resume. So I did set up and there's really no changes to be made. And I went ahead and saved it and rebooted and this is the screen that comes up after the save and reboot so um, it really doesn't say what processor it has installed I think that is a very big weakness for a motherboard it should de declare what processor is being booted up so we'll get it into Linux um, as a matter of fact I've got it paused I'm gonna do a control C We'll go into Linux, we'll look at the system monitor and see how many cores we have for starters. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but I've got 16 cores there on the CPU history and then below the graph is the, I think threads, not cores, quite a few. And then memory 1.4 gigabytes out of 94.3 gigabytes being used which for me is quite a surprise. So basically the system as it is running uh, the KDE environments at 1.4 gigabytes, not a showstopper really. And of course network history. And then at the very bottom we have the CPU at 0%, zero processes, total memory in use and total swap in use, which is currently nothing. I love that. Here we have run the command proc CPU info and we use the less command actually to list it and we can see that it is the AMD Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core processor that is now installed and this is in Linux so this command you would run in Linux you run less space proc uh, actually forward slash proc forward slash CPU info alright so I ran Geekbench 4 and it just completed but before we go and check that out I wanted to show you the scores I got yesterday when I was doing the 2700X CPU 
I got a 5038 for single core and a 30,936 for multi core. Now I'm using Geekbench 4 because the other processors that I had done were also Geekbench 4, and I wanted to keep the uh, test criteria the same. That way we can compare numbers. So there is the link, it's all done. I'm going to go ahead and click on it, but it might take a minute. All right, what do we got? So for single core 5961 slightly better than before at 5038 but multi-core 60,245 versus 30,936 with the ryzen 2700x i want to share this one thing with you before we go and it's not the bottle of water look at the time here for the render of this video now this is a 4k video i think it's I don't know 20 30 minutes long so it says it rendered in 22 minutes 8 seconds now that doesn't seem very fast but the render time on the Ryzen 2700 X was 90 minutes I can't believe that it literally shaved off an hour of time so definitely definitely like this and 1080p will be even faster but 4k i'm very impressed all right if you like this video hopefully you'll subscribe give it a like and i would like to hear your comments what you think about the 3950x whether or not it's worthwhile doing and if you really want to join me at patreon and maybe 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 consider giving a dollar uh, which helps me buy equipment and hardware like the 3950X so that we can showcase it and do things with it. Thanks for watching.